Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tash Teaches. Today's video is going to be very short and it's merely a response to a question that Laciba Langer asked on my Scalar 2 video yesterday. He was looking for some tips on how to individually root out the sounds of XLN XO to separate audio channels. If you're using Atlas or XO or any kind of instrument where you want to be able to have each individual output on a separate audio channel, this is a video for you. Why would you want to do this? Well, when I make a drum pattern in a single MIDI clip, I like to then be able to not just affect the individual sounds in it, but record them to separate audio channels, because then I can chop them and edit them and do all sorts of stuff there. I don't like to keep my drums in one channel. So this is how you can do that with Atlas and XLNXO. So let's jump right in. OK, so first of all, I'm going to show you how to route Atlas to separate individual channels. If I go into Atlas here, um, for the sake of making this quick, I'm just going to drag in one of their um, preset MIDI clips. And then I'm going to loop that, because for some reason it doesn't loop by default. And I'm going to do a new kit. And then let's have a quick listen to what we've got. Quite cool. Um, for the sake of making this exciting for even me, I'm going to new kit it a couple of times until it sounds cool. That sounds quite cool. Okay, so currently all of these sounds are coming through one channel, and I don't like to have uh, an entire MIDI clip with just drums. I prefer to work in audio. And I could, of course, just record the audio out and mute individual sounds, or we could use the multiple outputs. So when we go into Atlas, and we click on any of these individual sounds, you can see down here it says channel one. If I pick this one, it also says channel one, which basically means that all of these sounds are coming through on channel one, and we want to be able to route them separately. And I could go in here and change that to channel two, or there's this quite nice little feature where you just click sequential, and now you'll see that all of them go up two, three, four, five, six, seven, whatever. Um, what's quite cool now is on the actual Atlas um, plugin, in Bitwig, we have this little button here, the two arrows, which is the Show Plugin Multi Out Chain Selector. Once I do that, I have the option to either add single chains, and this currently is just the kick. If I add another one, we'll have the snare. Or you can do what's quite fantastic, is the Add Missing Chains, and it will add all of them. And then I would go in here, and I would call that kick, and I would call that snare, and that clap. And of course, you could save this as a preset, which I, in fact, would heavily recommend. I've just undone my preset to show you this. Um, but once you've done that, um, for the sake of keeping this simple, we'll call that closed hat. What's this? Closed hat. And what's that one, then? We'll call that open hat for now. I'm just going to delete all the sounds that are unused for the moment, just to give us a, a bit more space mentally. Um, let's highlight all those. Okay, cool. So we've got our kick, snare, clap, closed hat, and open hat. What you can now do, and this is where it becomes quite handy if you're into the old audio workflow, is you have your snare, and then clap, and then closed hat, and open hat. And then all you have to do is change the input to Atlas, Atlas Chains, and then the respective name. So you can now go here to... Uh, sorry, let's just do this very quickly. Sorry, input and Atlas, Atlas Chains, snare, clap. We'll do Atlas, Atlas Chains, clap. Um, oh, that's output. And we'll go input. Oh, sorry, bear with me for a sec. And finally, open hat. Now, we have the option, it's also quite important to note as well, if I click this, I can see the individual chains, so that does allow me to go in and do automation on the individual sounds, you know, I could just add, I could add effects to individual sounds, because Atlas doesn't actually have any inbuilt sounds, or in, any inbuilt effects. Um, but what's quite cool now is that, say I've come up with my cool pattern, maybe I've got a few in there, so we've got one here without the kick, you know, what we can now do is, if we record arm all of these guys, I can now record, let's record with this kick one, I can now record in the individual sounds. And you'll be able to see that now I have all of these separate audio channels, which makes it a lot easier for me to then go in and make modifications. And I absolutely love this. Okay, so let's have a look at how we can do the same thing in XO, because it's slightly different, but it's the same concept. 
So I'm going to go in here, and I'm actually just going to use their inbuilt, um, their, their play feature. And I'm not even going to do a MIDI clip this time. So if we click play, let's skip through. Okay, I quite like that. Okay, so when we want to separate the audio channels in XO, we do a similar thing, but it's not quite as, uh, as, as simple. We can't just right click. But where it says here, M, that's master. So all we need to do is change bus one. On this one, we'll then change that to bus two. And you guessed it, bus three, bus four. And again, I would recommend that you set this as a default. So when you, you know, if this is a workflow that you think you want to use, set Atlas up and uh, XO up so that straight away you're getting these out into separate channels. So now if I click play, we're not getting anything. And that's one different thing here is that XO does have a built-in effects unit and the effects will go to master one. So let's go back to XO again, do the multi output chain selector, add the missing chains. And for some reason as well, it um, it plays the, the sounds um, backwards. So, ah, I get it, kick is eight, although it's at the bottom. Okay, that makes sense now. So when I now open this up, you can see that the sounds are coming through on their individual chains. So let's find something which has a little, with a few more sounds. Well, that would seem quite cool. Okay, nice. So all I need to do again is let's just rename these. Kick two, and this is a snare, I'm imagining, yeah. Snunte, snare. That's definitely a cowbell. Hat one. Hat two, I think. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, tambourine. Shaker. And then this last one, or the first one that you get, is the effects. So you can either just delete that for the dry sound, or you can keep that as effects. And now all we need to do to route those to separate channels, once we're happy with this and we've balanced them properly, and you know we've put some sort of like a distortion on that kick. And for some reason we decided to roll with that. Again, we just add an audio channel and the audio routing would be XO, and then we do XO kick, and vice versa, so we call that kick two, and I could now record out, oh, sorry, let's record, let's just do, for the sake of uh, a quick demonstration, the XO, XO chains, we'll go for effects, and then here we can go for XO, XO chains, and then we can do kick one, and let's do the snare and the cowbell. So then we can change this one to XO chains, snare, and cowbell, cowbell post. Okay, so now this just allows me to record on these. Could have done that a quicker way, and I can just record out Oh. Come on, you bastard. And then there I have my separated audio channels. And then once you're done as well, you can just delete XO, and then you've got your, your little drum pattern here. Well, anyway, I hope that's been helpful, and uh, see you next time.